All right, guys, what I got here is an extra speaker bezel that uh, goes on a 55, 56 dash on the passenger side, and a 6 by 9 speaker goes behind there. This is from a 150 or 210 series 55 or 56 Chevy. They have a Chevrolet script in the dash here. You can buy these reproduction. They're not very expensive. I want to say they're like 15 bucks. Anyway, uh, if you got a Bel Air, it would say Bel Air in there, and the, the font is quite a bit bigger. But for what I want this for, for a detail item, which I'm going to show you, I need to get this emblem off of here. This is a spare uh, bezel. So it has a little push lock nut on it. And what I'll do is I'll take a little pocket flat blade screwdriver, and I'll go in here and try to bend up this tab a little bit here. Pull it off. I got another little jeweler's pocket flat that's uh, pretty small. Get it started so I can get that bigger one down in there to get it up there. There's that one. That one's actually sitting pretty high right there. I might be able to get under that. And then again, maybe not. These old tabs on these emblems can break very easily, so do be careful. All right. Got it off without breaking the tabs off of the little emblem. So that emblem, I cleaned it up a little bit when it was still mounted. Uh, so I'm going to go in here with a, a toothbrush and some Windex and just kind of clean it up a little bit better because it is kind of dingy down on the edges. But the face of it, the chrome, is really not in too bad a shape. All right, my next step is going to be take those clips that I got off there and I'm going to set them on a piece of uh, steel here. I'm going to take a little small hammer, knock it back down. So now when you go to put them back on, they're back tight again. All right, so now that I got the emblem off, I've got a piece of poster board here. And I've got it cut to a specific width, which I'm going to show you in a minute what it's for. And then I basically cut it to a length that's even, so it would be easier to calculate what was middle for me. So anyway, I cut it off even. And then I measured it and figured out what center was, and I drew my center line. And then at that point, I laid this down on this notebook, and I just basically held that script above it till, I, till it looked like it was pretty much center. And then I pushed in each area that there was a tab. Pushed down kind of hard. And what it did was in tabs, those three tabs, they, they put little dents in that cardboard or paper. And then at that point, uh, I went in there with my little tiny flat blade and just kind of worked it a little bit. I didn't try to punch it through. I just kind of worked it a little bit. And then at that point, I stuck the emblem on the piece of poster board like this and just pushed on it to get it broke through the rest of the way. And then I took my fine tip sharpie and I just kind of went around a little bit. So if I drop this on the floor and pick it back up, I know about which way it goes because if you turn it upside down, it won't fit right. So anyway, now I'll show you what it's for. All right, guys, so that's what this is for is the factory battery box. Uh, I did this probably back in the early 2000s to a car I had when I was running the factory battery box up front. But anyway, so I've measured from here to here and drew a center line right there. You can kind of see my Sharpie line, so I know that's center. And then I line it up with that, and that's where that's going to go. So that'll be a little chrome Chevrolet script on the front of the battery box. Uh, just a little bit of detail. It doesn't really need it because I'm going to have Chevrolet scripted valve covers in the same exact font. Uh, so, you know, I'm sure when the hood's open, you're going to pretty much figure out a Chevrolet because it says it three times. If the Chevy engine orange paint doesn't give it away the first time and it being in a Chevy car, you know what I mean? Anyway, so what I'll do now is I'll pull the emblem off here. I cut this, the width of this battery tray lip right here. So now when I line that up to center, I actually had to wallow that hole out a little bit. And need to mark it up here to the top. 
because when I put the dent in it, I got a little bit too low. Uh, but anyway, I'll take this and I'll line up my line on the paper and line on the battery box and I'll line up that, that deal there like that. And then I'll take that fine tip Sharpie, draw a little dot there, a dot there, and a dot right there. So there's my three dots. Now I'll take a drill. I'm going to caliper with my little caliper. I basically gonna take the caliper and stick it on that tab so I'll know what size it is and then I'll open up my drill bit thing and I'll just set the caliper on each drill bit until I find the one that fits. I'll drill that out and then that'll slip in there and I can put the original tabs that I straightened back up back on there. Now it seems like I had to file the tabs down a little bit or grind them down a little bit because they stuck out too far that it hit the battery but I don't remember. So that may need done but I can worry about that later. I'll just go in there and uh, test fit the battery if it doesn't work. I'll go back in there and I'll kind of fire grind that down a little bit with my belt sander or something, grinder, whatever I got. But anyway, that's how you can put a little Chevrolet script on your battery tray for just a little bit of detail. Um, you could probably put it on the top lid too if you wanted. Probably look better on the top. But anyway, I was kind of thinking a speed hole in the top all the way around with a bunch of holes. So uh, I thought that would be kind of cool. But anyway, now they do sell those emblems. Uh, in the books, I think I mentioned that, but just something you can do with a little script. But, you know, it's kind of pushing it on the Chevrolet logo under the hood because it's already going to be in three places now. Man, I'm wishing I wouldn't get a spring punch. I keep forgetting. Got to do it the old-fashioned way. Use my old uh, caliper here, and I figured out what size the tab was on the deal. And then the first drill bit I pulled out, this one's just a hair bigger, but the one I need is actually, it broke, so I threw it away. So I got an empty slot in there, and it's the one I need. So I'm just going to go one size bigger. It ain't going to hurt nothing, because uh, I'm going to go back, and when I restore this battery tray, I've already patched it in some places, but uh, I'm going to paint the sides of this like a flat or, not flat, but like a semi-gloss or satin black. But I'm going to use Raptor bed liner uh, on the main tray, top and bottom. Because this is so pitted, you know, it's old. Uh, the, it, the bed liner kind of helps camouflage the pits, which the battery will cover it anyway. But... Got that turned up too high. gosh. I'd say my drill boat's a little dull, man. I'm going to have to uh, dig around in the box see if I can find another one. All right, guys, I just went ahead and uh, speed hold the top lid, uh, the tray top for the battery, just to give it a little detail. Uh, it didn't take, I don't know, maybe five, seven minutes probably to drill that out. Uh, I drew a grid on it, up and down lines, and one across the, for the middle. Did a little tiny pilot hole, and then I used a step bit on my impact driver. Pretty much drilled them the same size, and the metal on these is pretty thick stuff. Now, it's actually doubled up on the sides, so I was, I was going to put a speed hole or two on the sides here, but this is actually has spot welds in it holding this inner structure piece on, so I'm not going to do that. I don't want to drill a spot weld, and then that piece come loose, and I have to do a bunch of welding. So it'll be set on top of the battery, so when the hood's up, you will see the speed holes, and then you'll see the Chevrolet script on the bottom. So it's a, just a little bit of detail for a little bit of time. Uh, all total will probably be, you know, 30 minutes total probably in this, this setup. But anyway, I just need to do something with it because it's just plain Jane. There's nothing there. But anyway, so this is the thing that I've done. I've done a lot of speed holing on my two-door hardtop. I speed hold a lot of stuff on that car. Uh, I even took the uh, remanufactured alternator completely apart till it was bare case halves, and I drilled speed holes three in each side of that alternator on both ends. Um, so the alternators, I smoothed the case and everything, and it's all speed hold. It looks like a high-end custom alternator, 
and it's just a $50 remand from O'Reilly's. And then I painted it black and then put it all back together with a billet twisted fan and a March underdrive pulley on it. So not really going to go that far with this car, but uh, one of the parts that I got for this that's really, really nice is a hood latch support brace that comes up off the splash apron to hold the part where your hood latch hooks into on the grill. I have that whole bracket speed hold and it's actually because I lost, I did one for my hard top and then I lost it and I couldn't find it so I drilled speed holes in another one and then I found my new grill for my hard top and I forgot all that stuff was still attached to it. So there it was. The other thing I might drill speed holes in for this car other than this is I may do the grill bar, the top grill bar. I may drill speed holes in that because I did it to the hard top and it looks really cool. Uh, speed holes is just a detail thing uh, for me uh, because I'm not going for a race car and that's usually what people do for a race car. But Anyway, to me it's a detail thing. Now, since this is thick metal, what I like to do to this thick metal after I get the hole drilled is I go back and use countersink bits. These are from Harbor Freight and they're basically for wood what, to use a countersink screw or bolt or something. Uh, but they work pretty good here to give you a nice little chamfered edge uh, to make it almost kind of look like a dimple die in a way, but not really. So I'm going to do that right now. These are old. <clears throat> you know, they're not really designed for steel, but... So anyway, it just kind of chamfers the edge a little bit. So now I'll go through with the uh, DA and just kind of clean this up a little bit. And I really need to get on the backside and get all that shrapnel out of there. Anyway, that's gonna end up looking pretty cool, man. They work good for cleaning off that shrapnel stuff without really digging into the metal. find my rat tail file but I can't find it it's probably in the car somewhere but it actually is probably too big anyway so some of that shrapnel pulled around and got into my holes so I'm gonna use this little fine fine round file I'm just going here and kind of work the shrap the rest of the shrapnel off so this will be satin black like the sides of the battery box when I do those and then I'll rapture line the main tray so try to hide some of the pitting, but it'll also, you know, be a little bit of a, I don't know, something to kind of help it if the battery ever leaks acid out. I think it, that Raptor liner would probably be good for that. Oh, yeah. 
So there it is, just barely chamfered, and uh, it's just kind of clean looking. I think it'll look pretty awesome on top of that battery. Let's just see. Yeah, that's kind of cool. Oh boy, I might have another idea. Great. More detail. All right, we'll scratch that. I'm going to have to go dig around in my shed, but I've got some old Bel Air aluminum dash trim inserts that go in the Bel Air 55s. Uh, it has all the bow ties on it. I have a bunch of those old, like tons of them, uh, center pieces, corner pieces. Some of them's pretty rough, like beat up and, you know, nowadays people just buy brand new sets, but anyway, I've got some of them that were pretty rough and I cut sections out and used it in my hard top. Uh, so I might go in here and epoxy some of those on the back side of that, like polish them all out to where the bow ties aren't black. Just polish it all out because it'll be easier and then paint this set in black and then epoxy in that row of all the little bow ties together. May do that. I don't know. I might just leave it open. Depends on how I'm feeling when I get that far, I guess, but eh, speed holes are always cool, man. I love that stuff. Don't know why. Looks cool to me. I wanted to add this, guys. If you wanted to speed hole some stuff, uh, I could not find mine. I don't know where it went. It had to have gotten knocked off the peg on the wall and wound up underneath one of these uh, shelving units. I have a roll of that steel plumber's tape, you know, that has all the holes in it that are all even. Um, that's what I usually try to use when I'm speed holing something because I can lay that out there even and then just take that fine tip sharpie and go through there and do all the circles and then the holes are kind of small enough where you can find center with a drill bit to punch it out and then you have an evenly spaced set of speed holes but I could not find that plumber's tape anywhere it drives me crazy I know you guys know what I'm talking about some of you may not it's I guess it's for hanging for pipes and stuff or whatever uh, for a house but it's, it's thin metal and it's a, like a roll, like tape would be. And when you unroll it, it has a, holes like this all in it and they're all even. So you can kind of use those and cheat to do it quick. Uh, otherwise, you got to go through there and uh, mark everything, you know, measure everything lengthways and widthways and try to find center. So anyway. All right, so here it is finished. The emblem is not sucked up there yet. It keeps trying to fall out. But anyway. Nice little detail there. So when that's all painted black, it should look pretty cool. It's all in the details, man.